Hi all, good afternoon. So today we'll discuss about complete overview of what exactly Python full stack and what are the modules we are going to learn. Everything we'll discuss today. So see here, first I'm going to list out modules list under Python full stack course. What are the modules we are going to learn? So first one is about Python programming language. After that, Django framework. And the next one, MySQL and GitHub and Git Bash. So these are the first four modules. After this, we are going to start UIR front end technologies. Under UI or front end technologies, first one HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and next one jQuery and Bootstrap. So these are the course modules are included under our Python full stack course. And the entire course, it will take four months duration. So first four modules, two months, a remaining modules, again, we are going to spend two months of duration, total four months. And we have a sessions from Monday to Friday and daily one hour session will be there. And out of one hour, only 40 to 45 minutes class and the last 15 minutes, we are going to focus on about your queries only about yesterday queries or about today. So completely we are going to focus on queries last 15 minutes, daily common thing. And after this session, we'll share material soft copy to your email IDs and class recording video also will share. If you join offline or online also, daily you will get class link and after the class you will get class recording video also. We'll upload the video in Google Drive. From there, we can access. And along with this, based on the concepts, we are going to share assignment also. So based on the concepts, we are going to share regular assignments. So this is about our course duration and the course structure. And after this, Monthly, twice mock interviews we are going to conduct online, offline, all are available. So compulsory we have to attend for these mock interviews only. In these mock interviews, programming tests and technical queries we are going to conduct. And after that, here we are going to focus on around seven projects we are going to work out. Why? Because if you want to know the real-time experience, if you want to know the real-time errors, compulsory we have to focus on project sounding. So here, out of seven projects, first project, we are going to develop one static website by using Python and Django framework. And the second one, one web application like employee portal, we are going to develop and after that, by using only Python, we are going to develop three more backend projects. And by using UI technologies, again, we are going to work out with two projects. So total seven projects in our entire course, we are going to perform. So once we finish the Python, Django, MySQL, we are going to focus on half of the projects. Once the UI also finished, we'll go for the remaining projects. And after completion of these projects, here we'll get course complete certificate first one. And for freshers, we'll get internship certificate also. So they will give you the six months internship experience from our company. So this is about project information and the certification information from our end. And along with course, end of the course will share you sample resumes like for pressures, for experienced persons, for career gap persons. Based on the requirement, we are going to share the resumes 
and the second one interview questions why because our previous students are attended for different type of companies only by end of the day we are going to gather from them we have prepared one sheet format module wise only and along with the interview questions document we'll share few programs for only freshers only for freshers few important programs we are going to share so this is about our course structure like a modules information duration assignments videos projects resumes everything and after this we'll create one telegram group there we are going to add all our batch students only so here you can communicate to each other about your queries or about interviews information everything you will find in this group only so this is about our python full stack complete overview and now we'll discuss in detail about step by step so if any queries please note down by end of the demo i will give you the access for each and every person you just ask your queries will clear step by step no need to worry i will explain multiple times so before going to start about our what is full stack everything first of all we should know what exactly web application in our regular life we are using so many web applications for example facebook youtube whatever applications we are going to open online all the applications are considered as web applications only to open these web applications just to we need internet connectivity we can open from anywhere for example i have some abc application from hyderabad i am able to open from us i am able to open because these all are web applications only so here each and every application divided into two parts first one is front end and the second one is about back end only so what exactly front end here front end nothing but ui or presentation ui nothing but user interface or simple words we can say presentation mobile for example i am a user i try to open my zoom application in my browser see here once we open the application on the screen they are displaying some content right images colors text etc so here what they are doing they are displaying some kind of presentation on the screen to provide the information so when we open the application whatever we are able to see on the screen is considered as front end only and what about the second one here back end back end nothing but logics or functionality logics or functionality in your application to develop a different type of features for example schedule a meeting is one feature join meeting one feature whiteboard another feature and my account another feature like this to develop different features in your application compulsory we have to write different type of logics or functionalities so here these logics or functionality consider as back end so without a back end only they will display the presentation no feature will work if you want to work with each and every feature compulsory back end logics also important then who are going to develop front end and back end so here to work with the front end we have separate front end developers are there to work with the back end we have separate back end developers are there but nowadays companies are hiring full stack developers why because full stack developer is the person to develop both front end and back end of your application so if you want to finish a application from end to end compulsory we should know about front end technologies and we should know about back end technologies as well so as a full stack developer we are going to learn front end and back end technologies and how to develop the front end how to develop the back end so in our course we have python django and mysql 
these all are backend technologies. By using this, we can develop backend of your application by using UI or front end technologies. We are going to develop front end of your application as well. So this is about our course overview here. So front end technologies and back end technologies. For example, I'm going to join for only Python and Django. So what type of roles will get in our current market? So here, if you know only Python and Django, will get backend developer role, backend developer, and Python developer, and Django developer, web developer. So these type of roles will get if we know only backend technologies. But along with these backend technologies, database and UI technologies. If you know database and UI technologies, easily will get front end developer, front end developer, and the next one full stack developer. So, like this, we'll get so many roles. So, see here, simple concept based on number of skills, our opportunities may vary, our package also vary. Nowadays, everybody are going to hire full stack developers because nobody are going to hire separately for front end, separately for back end. So simply they will hire full stack developers based on the project requirement. Sometimes they will assign the front end, sometimes they will assign the back end as well. So that's why try to join only full stack only, not only back end or not only front end. If you want to become a full-fledged web developer or software developer, compulsory each and every module mandatory. So this is about what exactly full stack. And here under Python full stack, what about our first module? Python. So what is a Python? Python is programming language. Python is programming language. Like Python, we have number of programming languages are there. For example, C is one programming language, Java is another programming language. So what is the use of programming language? Programming language, nothing but set of instructions. By using set of instructions, we can communicate with our device, we can communicate with our computer to perform specific tasks or function only. Because if you want to perform specific tasks, then how to approach with computer? By using programming languages, we are going to approach. So here, C is one programming language. Java is another programming language. So why this much demand for Python from last few years? Why? Because compared to other programming languages, here we have easy syntaxes on there. Syntax, nothing but structure or format only. So in the programming languages, to develop any type of feature, to develop any type of logic, compulsory we have to follow one syntax only. So here, compared to other programming languages, we have easy and simplified syntaxes on there. And the second one is, Python is open source. Open source, nothing but Python is free software. So no need to pay anything directly from Python official website, python.org. So from this website, we are going to download Python directly. If you are using Windows OS or Linux or any device also, directly we can download and very easy to install also. And Python is not a new programming language. Late 1990s only that it was developed. And from past five to six years onwards, day by day Python market increased because of so many technologies are introduced in our current market, like machine learning, data science, artificial intelligence. In each and every platform, nowadays companies are preferring 
Python has their backend programming language. So if you want to become a data scientist, if you want to become a developer, if you want to become a tester also, only Python is required as a backend programming language. So we'll see. And the third one is about Python is platform independent. Platform independent. So what is platform independent? For example, this is about my Python, some example program. Now my program is ready. If you want to check the output, compulsory, we have to run the program so that they will display output only. But where we have to run, where how, how to execute this program? For this, in a Windows device, once we installed Python, we'll get ideally integrated development and learning environment by default, IDLE provided by Python. By using IDLE, we can execute our programs. The second one, in our devices, we have command prompt. By using command prompt also, we can run our Python program. And we have Jupyter Notebook. Jupyter Notebook also, we can run. And we have some third party tools, PyCharm, Sublime, Visual Studio, Atom, like this number of platforms are there to execute and to run your Python program. You can use any platform also, no issues. They will return the same output only. So that's why here Python consider as platform independent. And next one. So here, by using Python, we can develop web applications and we'll work out with desktop applications. After that, in data visualization also, companies are using Python and in data analytics, nothing but in machine learning also. After that, in the testing environment, for example, Python with the Selenium, so long back, Java with the Selenium, we have a huge demand. But now everybody converted to Python with the Selenium only. In a game development, in a graphic. So in each and every platform, companies are using Python as their backend programming language to develop the logics easily. So the same logics we can develop by using other programming languages also. Then why we have to prefer Python? Why? Because compared to other programming languages, here code length is less. For example, I'm going to develop one ABC application. So by using some Java, for example, I'm writing thousand lines of code. The same application I'm going to develop by using Python, for example, 700 lines only. From these two, which one will you prefer? Obviously, people will go with Python only. Because in any companies, in any application, if a code is less, automatically it will improve our application performance, application maintenance easy, and debugging process also easy. Debugging nothing, bug nothing but error. Debugging nothing but fixing the errors. If we have less number of lines, we can easily fix the errors. So why here code is less? Why? Because here simplified and easy syntaxes are there. That's why here we are going to write less number of lines only. Why? Because by end of the day, our major focus is about our application performance only. For this in the back end, we have to follow all these things. And now, Sir, I don't know anything about coding or programming language. Am I eligible to learn Python programming? Yes, obviously, yes. Why? Because to start your career with IT, Python is the best platform to start here. Why? Because if you want to start with Java, compulsory, we need some basic coding or C programming language basics. But here, no need. From scratch, we are going to start nothing but what is application, what is programming language, how to write the program. From here, we are going to start our programming only. So we can see here, for example, 
I am going to develop one small program by using some Java. So here I am performing some addition of two numbers only. Addition of two numbers program. So here total how many lines we, we have? Around eight to nine lines of code available. The same program we can develop by using Python by three lines only. Because to perform addition operation, we need two numbers. After that, we have to perform the A plus B expression only. So here, to work out this in other programming languages, we have to write a different syntax. Nothing but curly braces, end of the line, semicolons, before the value in to float str. In Python, no need to write this type of code. So in case, here also, if you are following the same, then why we have to learn? Already we have existing programming language, right? So the main reason is here simplified syntaxes are there, very easy to learn compared to other programming languages. And now the thing is, sir, here you are saying very easy. Then how to install the Python? Where we have to write our Python programs? See here, Python official website, python.org, from this website with the two simple clicks, we can finish the installation. So see here, I'm going to download the Python. So just to enter Python download. And the first link see here, python.org, open it. And directly they are showing download Python 3.11.4. So here 3.11.4 is the version. Present latest version is Python 3. In Python 3, we can use any version. So here you can see download. I'm using Windows OS, that's why automatically identified. If you are using Linux or some other OS, here we have other options only. So just to click on download button. See download process started. Once the download finished, just to click on downloaded file, immediately they will display install option directly. Here, no multiple steps, only two steps. Just to click on downloaded file. After that, click on install now. So process will start after 30 to 40 seconds, sometimes 20 seconds also process will finish. And instead of cancel, they will display finish or close button only. So click on install and finish with two simple clicks. We are going to install our Python. And once installation finished, then how to open the Python? So for this, go to your search. In search, we have to enter IDLE. We already discussed IDLE nothing but integrated development and the learning environment. Once we install the Python in our device, by default, Python will provide IDLE. So in the starting stage, in a basic stage, we are going to use IDLE. After that, some different tools, after Jupyter. So now I'm going to show you how to create a Python file, how to execute your Python file by using IDLE. So see here, already process under progress, we'll see. It may take around some five to 10 seconds time to finish the whole process. Okay, so here the process is going on. In my device, we have another version also. So just to go to search, enter IDLE. See here, I just enter IDLE. I have 3.9, I have 3.11 version also. 3.11 installation going on. That's why I'm going to open 3.9. Just to click on it. And here they are showing version number. If you are using latest version, the latest version number they will display here. And here we'll write our programs. For example, I'm going to mention just ABC. And I want to write one more line. Press enter. See, after the single line, immediately program executed, they are showing errors. But observe one thing, is it possible to finish the logic by using single line of program? Not possible, right? 
compulsory we have to write multiple lines of code so here they are allowing us to write only single line only then where we have to write for this purpose left side you will find the option called file option so click on file option and new file so inside of the file, we'll write multiple lines of code. After that, save the file here. For example, save. And on desktop, I'm going to save the file. My file name, demo. But end of the file name, compulsory, we have to enter .py. .py nothing but Python. To save your Python files, end of the file name, we have to enter extension so for example if you are using python dot py is the extension if you are using html dot html if we are using php dot php based on technology our extension may vary so here we are using python so that's why they are showing we are writing file name dot py extension now we have two lines of code. I want to find out the result. For this, we have to run the program. So here only we'll see, we have a run option. Just to click on run and run module. See, in our program, we have errors. They are showing error information. So in demo.py, in line number one, they are showing name error here. For example, I'm going to fix the errors. So I just fixed the errors. Again, run this program, run module. So there is no error. They are trying to display output. If we have a program here, they will return output only. So this is about basic process, how to create a file and how to run your Python file. So previously we discussed addition of two numbers by using Java. We said like uh, by using three lines of code, we can finish the execution. So see here, to perform addition operation, we need two values. After that, we have to write the expression. So just to go to your file. First, I need first value, for example, a equal to one. And second one, some b equal to 200. And the third one, to perform addition, what is the expression? First number plus second number. So first number A plus B I'm using here. So just to save and to run your file, run module. So here they are showing empty here. And now you can see if any errors are there, they will display here. But here we don't have any errors, right? So then they're supposed to display output. Why they are not displaying anything? Why? Because on the screen, if you want to print any statements, compulsory we have to use print method. I want to print A plus B result. That's why I'm adding A plus B inside of print method. So just execute here. Here they are showing output. So this is about the basic process. To perform this addition program, we are not using any curly braces or int or float or any semicolons, nothing required. Simplified code we are using in our Python programming language. So this is about some small introduction about Python programming and Python features. And here, our Python module divided into two parts. First one, core Python. And the second one is advanced Python. Our Python module divided into two parts, core Python and advanced Python. So here, core Python refers all the basics from scratch. What is Python, Python installation, Python features from scratch to few advanced concepts we are going to cover under Python, like how to write the program, how to write the conditions, how to write the logics. Everything will cover under core Python. Once the basics are done, you will get clarity how to deal Python program, how to develop the logics. But to develop a different type of advanced features, we need few advanced concepts. All the advanced concepts we are going to discuss 
under advanced python only so under advanced python majorly we are going to focus on whoops concepts object oriented programming concept in any programming language whoops concepts are basics one in advanced concepts under whoops we'll discuss encapsulation and abstraction inheritance polymorphism exception handling like this all the concepts we are going to cover under advanced python after this majorly will focus on modules concept nothing but how to access properties from one file to another file one package to another package we are going to discuss here and the next one regular expressions and after that multi threading and after multi threading next one file handling concepts so like this few advanced concepts we are going to cover along with the develop modules we are going to cover four data science modules first one numpy second one pandas and the third one web scraping and the last one is matplotlib so these are the advanced modules also will cover in our end of the course only if you want to become a data scientist compulsory we should know in detail about these modules from end to end everything we are going to cover under advanced python so in our course first we are going to start with python only once python program finished you will get complete idea how to develop the logics how to develop the back end of your application so now we have a clarity by using programming languages we are going to develop the logics or functionality but in application model how to use this python programming language that's why python introduced one framework called django framework so django is python based web framework by using this django framework we can enable rapid development of your web application so generally if you want to develop your application in back end so many files so many connections so many default settings we have to add but is it possible to develop all these files manually not possible so for this purpose here we have a framework to called django framework by using django framework we can develop entire structure of your application within a fraction of seconds by using simple commands only to start with django compulsory everybody should know in detail about python because django developed by using python programming language here we are not going to learn anything new whatever concepts we discussed in python all the concepts we are going to implement in the form of framework only so here you can see why we have to go with django framework why because first one django is open source django also free software second one it is fully loaded fully loaded nothing but to develop any type of application compulsory we have to use different type of features only so in django framework all the features are inbuilt features only no need to write from scratch if you want to use particular feature you just import the module you can use as per requirement only and the third one is about security also nowadays all major applications are facing security issues but here there is no security issues and the next one need scalability and the last one is versatile so by using django we can develop small scale to large scale any type of applications for example i want to develop one basic school website yes we can develop i want to develop one dynamic application yes we can develop so that's why here it is versatile so with the help of python and django only will develop the backend only with the python possible only with the back end django framework also possible compulsory we need python and django and after django we are going to cover about one database called mysql 
to develop any application in a back end database also required in a django framework we have one free inbuilt database called sql light reader free inbuilt database so no need to perform anything manually here all already included in our framework but we should know how to work with some external databases for this purpose we are going to learn mysql in detail from end to end after that instead of sql light 3 we'll connect our application with the mysql database only and after database here we have few tools are there like github and at the same way git bash these are the small concepts to deploy your application to download your files to upload your files everything we are going to cover by using github so these four modules we are going to cover under backend technologies in the first two months and after this we are going to start about front end backend functionality is okay but what about the look and feel also important to attract the users to provide the information for this purpose we need front end technologies so what are the front end technologies we are going to learn first one html css and bootstrap javascript jquery these are the front end technologies we are going to learn under front end technologies module last two months so first one html by using html we can design layout of your application nothing but if you want to develop one school website one hospital application so first we should know what is the structure what about your views so simply by using html i'm going to mention one menu here like the logo after that home about services so on so after the menu i will display one form one uh, banners after the banners one heading and one paragraph text i will display in right side i will create one registration form so like this we are going to design the layout of your application with the help of html but here there is no look and feel there is no styles so to attract the users we have to provide some rich look for this purpose we are using css cascading style sheets by using cascading style sheets we are going to provide some rich look for your application so see here before the css yeah dynamic forms also we are going to cover we'll we'll discuss nihal end of the demo so here by using css we are going to provide some rich look for your application we'll add the styles and the third one is about bootstrap so by using this we are going to develop device friendly applications nowadays everybody are using smartphones everybody are using tabs and the laptops everything so based on the device size our application should be minimized automatically for example see here i am opening my application in my laptop here they are showing the menu horizontally and data also they are displaying as per my device if i am going to open the same application in mobile device see again based on the size automatically minimize so it is called responsiveness to develop responsive or device friendly applications we are going to use bootstrap and after that jquery to add little animations for example when we open the application some images are going on for example see here here i have opened my application once we open the application first one image they are showing and after some time image change and some other titles are coming this is some kind of animation like this in your application if you want to add the animations we are going to use this jquery concepts and the last one javascript by using javascript from front end from client side we can develop the functionalities the best example form validations so see here i have one registration form name and phone number 
instead of phone number, Mr. entered email ID, immediately they will display, please enter valid phone number, please enter valid email ID. These type of warnings they may display, right? So these are form validations only. So by using JavaScript, we can perform validations also. Like this, we can develop full-fledged functionality by using JavaScript also. So compulsory in the front end, everybody should know about HTML, CSS, Bootstrap, and JavaScript. These four are mandatory. If you know jQuery, that is extra advantage only. Now we have a clarity. Simply by using this programming language, framework, and database, we are able to develop the back end of your application by using UI technologies, we'll develop the front end of your application. So full stack developer role is to develop both front end and back end to develop end to end application only. So if you want to become a full stack developer from end to end application, if you want to develop compulsory, we need back end technologies and front end technologies as well. So in our course, we'll cover all these modules. First, we'll start with the backend technologies. After that, we'll go with the frontend technologies. So this is about some small overview of each and every module. From Monday, we are going to start our regular sessions only. So now I will give the access one by one. You just let me know your queries.